welcome to Learn and Fly Melbourne. I'm one of the instructors here, and my name is Clement. Today, we are talking about descending. Before we talk about how to descend in an aircraft, we'll cover the different types of descent. The first one to talk about is the glide descent. Like its name, glide descent is essentially descending like a glider without any power. You may ask, why do we have to learn this? In case of an emergency, like a malfunction of the engine, where it's not producing any power, with this descent, we'll still be able to descend under control safely. The second one is called a cruise descent. It is the most used type of descent, as it is more gentle, shallower, and more comfortable during the cruise portion. The last one to talk about is the approach descent. This type of descent is being used when we are getting close to our destination and we are about to land. The reason why we have to learn this is because in order to land safely and approach safely, we first have to slow down to a safe speed. And this is what the approach descent can do. So in the last episode of climbing, we have talked about the different forces the airplane is experienced during climb. In this lesson descending, we have a look at the same forces, but let's have a look at the difference. When the aircraft is in descent, there will be the force of weight, which acts straight down to the ground from the center of gravity. To counteract that, we have the lift force produced from the wing. However, because the aircraft is in a descent, the attitude will be slightly pitched down, so as the lift force. All we can see here is that the lift line is shorter than the weight line, therefore lift is less than weight. For the example, we'll be assuming that the aircraft is conducting a glide approach. Essentially, the engine is not producing any power. So you guessed it, there will be zero thrust. Although there are no thrust, it doesn't mean there is no drag. Because remember, the aircraft is still flying in the air, and it is receiving a fair amount of air resistance that we call drag. So now, you may wonder, how do we balance everything out without a thrust? If we split weight into two portions, we will name the first portion weight 1, and it follows the vertical axis of the aircraft. What you will discover is that weight 1 is being counteracted by lift. They are perfectly equal and balanced. The second portion weight 2, it connects from the tip of weight 1 to the original weight line, and it is acting forward. What you can see is the direction of weight 2 and drag is exactly opposite. We can move the weight to up to be aligned with the drag line. And we can see, once again, they are equalized and balanced. Just to do a small recap, weight is being split in two portions, weight 1 and weight 2. Weight 1 is being balanced by lift, and weight 2 is being balanced by drag. So this diagram tells us that in the descent, there will be no net forces. Once again, we call this equilibrium. During a descent, there will be different factors affecting the descent performance. It's good to know what they are, so we can make adjustment in flight. Very similar to climbing, there are two main indications to judge our descending performance. The first one, the rate of descent, which is in feet per minute. The second one, angle of descent, which is in degrees. The first factor to talk about is the power, power from the engine. When we are conducting a glide descent, we bring the power all the way back to idle. Essentially, the engine is not producing any thrust, and that's how we do glide descent. However, when we are doing a cruise descent, we will reduce power from cruise power, but not all the way to idle, so you can expect there will be some thrust generated by the engine during the descent. And you may ask, how does the additional thrust change the forces on the aircraft? Because of the extra thrust, weight 2 is no longer needed to balance out the full amount of drag. As a result, we are now able to descend at a reduced rate and reduced angle of descent. The second factor is flaps. When we have flaps deployed, not only it increases the lift but also drag. And because of the amount of drag has increased, now the aircraft will be in a steeper descent, hence the rate and angle of descent will be increased. 
The next factor is the effect of the wind direction. When your aircraft is descending in a headwind, your angle of descent will increase. However, when you are descending in a tailwind, your angle of descent will decrease. Very important to point out is that rate of descent will not be changed by the horizontal wind because it is all about the vertical movement of the aircraft under a certain amount of time. Now, let's go through some of the work cycle for pre-entry in a descent. The pre-entry cycle is H-A-L, H heading. During our descent, we are trying to descend in a straight line. So what we can do to help us is, we will set our current heading to the heading bar to remind ourselves what heading we should be maintaining. A altitude, we will be setting the altitude that we want to descend to on the altitude bug. L, lockout. We'll be clearing the areas before we descend. So we'll be looking to the left, center, center, right, making sure there's no other obstacles or other aircraft in the way of our descent. After that, we can move on to the next cycle, the entry cycle. The work cycle for entry is P A S T, P power. During our descent, Depends on what type of descent we're doing, we have different power setting. If we're doing a glide descent, we'll go ahead and bring the power all the way back to idle. If we are doing an approach descent, we'll pull the throttle back to 10 to 13 inches of manifold pressure, along with the takeoff flaps. With the takeoff flaps, don't forget to check speed before lowering the flaps. Remember, the speed has to be below 108 knots. Lastly, Cruise descent. We'll bring the throttle back to around 18 inches of manifold pressure. And our desired performance for this descent is 500 feet per minute vertical speed. A attitude. During a glide descent, the correct attitude is about four fingers. In an approach descent, the attitude should be around half sky, half ground. What we mean by that is the horizon should be somewhat in the middle of our windscreen. For cruise descent, the correct attitude is 5 fingers. S. Speed. During a glide descent, speed should set at 70 knots. During an approach descent, speed should be around 80 knots. During a cruise descent, speed should be around 110 to 120 knots. T. Trim. We'll be using the trim until we can let go of the control stick and the plane will be maintaining the correct attitude by itself steadily. And that's it for the entry cycle. Now, we're moving on to the maintenance cycle, which is A-L-A-P. Attitude, lockout, attitude, performance. A, attitude. Depends on the type of descent that we're doing, we'll be using different attitude. L, lockout. We'll be looking out for other traffic or other obstacles during the descent exercise. Back to A, attitude. This is another opportunity for us to check our attitude. P, performance. We'll be looking at some of our instruments here. Firstly, we'll start off by looking at our heading. For our heading, we want to maintain the same heading as before. Another key indication is our vertical speed indicator. Especially when we're doing cruise descent, we want to try and maintain 500 feet rate of descent on our vertical speed indicator. It is also a good practice to always have a glance at your engine parameters to make sure everything is in the normal range. Because in a prolonged descent, there's a high risk of overcooling the engine, which we want to avoid. Which later on we'll talk about how to avoid it or how to rectify this problem. Another thing to look out for is the balance of the aircraft. If you look at the top portion of G1000, you'll see a triangle. And underneath the triangle, you see a little bar. And that bar is called the balance bar. We want the aircraft to be in balance all the time. If you see the bar to the right hand side of the triangle, apply a little bit of right rudder. When you step on the right rudder, you'll see the balance bar moving back to the center. 
Same happened if the balance bar is on the left hand side of the triangle. Apply a little bit of left rudder to center the balance bar, so the aircraft will be in balance all the time. Last but not least, we have to look at our altimeter. So we know our current altitude and how much left we have to descend. At about 100 feet before our desired altitude, we'll start our exit cycle, which is P-A-S-T. Power, attitude, speed, and trim. P, power. During our descent, we would have reduced power. So when we are leveling off, we have to reintroduce power to around 22 inches of manifold pressure and 2200 of RPM. Remember, we have to increase the pitch lever first before the throttle lever. So blue to black. A. Attitude. During our descent, our attitude may not be our normal cruise attitude. So when we are leveling off from a descent to strain level, we have to maintain four fingers attitude so the horizon will be four fingers on top of our dashboard. S. Speed. We'll be trying to maintain about 120 knots for our normal cruise speed. T. Trim. Depends on where we're pulling or pushing on the control stick, all we have to do is trim until the aircraft is able to fly by itself steadily to maintain four fingers attitude. We will now demo on how to do a descent, just like our climb, our descent pre-entry work cycle is HAL. Heading we have set to 266 degrees, so we'll be maintaining 266 degree altitude, we'll be descending to 2500 feet, so I've set 2500. Look out, clear left, center, center, right. Most importantly, there's no one in front of us, because that's where we're going. And today we'll be doing a glide descent, so the aircraft will become like a glider, which has no power. So I'll bring the throttle all the way back. Straight away you hear the pitch change from the engine, and the RPM is dropping. The aircraft starts to slow down. What about the right attitude? It's about 4 fingers. In a day 40 the glide speed is approximately 70 knots. Right now, in order to maintain this attitude, I have to pull on the control, so I'll be trimming back. Right now, even when the engine is out, we're not dropping like a rock. We are still gliding comfortably and being perfectly safe. So now we have 50 feet to go, we will start our exit cycle, I will start to introduce power, PAST to stop our descent. Power, we have add power, attitude still 4 fingers, speed will pick up to around 120 knots. Trim, I had quite a bit of back trim, so I'm actually pushing on the control stick quite a bit. Otherwise, the aircraft will pitch up. So I'll be trimming forward. The next phase we do is a lap. When you're not climbing, not descending, not turning, we have to do a lap to maintain straight and level. All the time. This is a time during our descent that we consider the threat and error management. So, what are some of the threats and errors that we should be aware of? To initiate a descent, we have to bring the power back. By doing so, the engine produces less heat. This is exaggerated when we're doing glide descent, because when we're doing a glide descent, the engines produce the least amount of heat. However, there is still a considerable amount of air cooling the engine when it's producing the least amount of heat. Potentially leads to overcooling the engine, and it can damage the engine. That's why all we should be doing is we should be adding power every 1000 feet we descend to maintain the engine temperatures within the normal range. The next threat to talk about is the incorrect attitude during descent. Most likely it is too low. This may lead to overspeeding which may overstress the airframe that can damage the aircraft. This mainly happens due to our mismanagement to our attitude. It can happen because we are not looking outside enough or we are fixating inside on our instruments. So a good rule of thumb is we have to make sure we are looking outside enough. About 90% of the time we should rest our eyes outside and only 10% we should be looking down on our instruments to ensure we are flying a correct and safe attitude. 
And that's it for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to our Learn With Lost YouTube channel for more great content and also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.